a four and a half percent jump. The constant currency has jumped to 4.4. Volume has jumped uh, uh, over 5 percent to 5.4 percent. Uh, and in all these parameters, it has done better than rival TCS, which uh, has a three percentage point lead in terms of valuations. So there is a huge cry that valuations have to be corrected in Infosys. But more than that, more than these financial numbers is the improvement in attrition rate, in utilization rate. Attrition rate coming down to below 15 percent, actually close to 14 percent from 20 percent uh, several quarters ago. That's a huge performance uh, improvement and uh, uh, the improvement in client uh, uh, additions. 79 uh, new uh, client additions compared to a normal run rate, Rima tells me, of 50 to 55. So this is more business, uh, more better improvement, uh, employment of their staff, yes. as well as uh, a, a, a huge jump even in the amount of uh, business done, volume of growth. Also, if you remember, Lata, when TCS's numbers came out, uh, an analyst was pointing out that now emphasis and TCS are converging, not just as far as revenue growth is concerned, Concern, but even on the margin front, so Infosys this quarter has done 24%. TCS is still higher at about 26. 26 odd percent, but now they are converging. So there could be a convergence as far as the valuations are concerned as well. Um, Nilesh, is that is that something that you are observing that this valuation gap could get narrowed significantly going ahead? Absolutely, so I clearly believe. Is my question. I think that it has to narrow is a given. a given. Would it overtake? I mean, would it go to 18 and TCS go to 17? Well, that's quite possible, but it could take a few quarters. I mean, the reality is that Infosys many years used to trade at a premium to mm -hmm. everybody else and then came in TCS and TCS started trading at a premium. Uh, most of these big companies go through these phases, especially in the IT sector. If you look at the data for the last 10, 15 years, you see extended outperformance by one company for a period of three, four years, uh, and then it takes a backseat and somebody really takes over. So I think probably that stage has come for Infosys right now. Uh, it also doesn't seem to be one quarter blip uh, because had that been the case, uh, they would have not upped the revenue guidance. They've upped it by 100 basis points. I mean, we haven't seen this from Infosys now for years. So this is probably happening. So if they're not up this guidance, you could probably say, wait for another quarter. Let's see how it plays out. But this is here is a company coming in and saying, I've improved all round operational performance and I'm also upping my revenue guidance. And I think that makes it a very strong case for outperformance and bridging the gap vis a vis TCS. Okay. Okay, right. now, uh, sh sorry, shining in borrowed feathers is uh, HCL Tech and Wipro as well. Both those stocks are up one uh, over 1%. Uh, would you now want to up your uh, view on any of the other IT stocks? Uh, no, I think at this stage it still makes sense to kind of be with the bellwether. Um, clearly, the other larger companies will probably still take some time for transition. Uh, there is really room from purely as an investor. Uh, there is room because Infosys had had a very long period of underperformance. Uh, and it's quite possible that that period of underperformance now translates into out outperformance. So I think amongst the bellwether, among the blue chips, it still makes sense probably right now uh, to be Infosys and write the whole re-rating story. Okay, actually we've been carried away with Infosys and Sun Pharma so much we forgot to mention a couple of other stocks that are moving around. Bharti Airtel is up 3% this morning reacting to the positive news that Bharti is looking to streamline its African businesses by selling four of its African subsidiaries. So as you can see this has been a big performer this year and this morning as well is up about 3.5%. And a couple of broader market stocks, CCL products, very strong earnings from the company. The stock is up 10% this morning and big volumes there. So this market is rewarding good uh, you know, companies that are uh, delivering good numbers, revenue growth of 25%, profit growth of almost 50%. So and there are some stocks looking And good. at the other end of the spectrum, Kitex takes a 9% knock. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's been a blue-eyed boy, 300 to 1,000 in one year. And uh, obviously, if you have subdued numbers at uh, uh, such a price point, you are going to see uh, some bit of profit taking coming into that stock. So that's 10% down. Okay, 9.65 to be precise. So th there is uh, uh, punishment for stocks that didn't come up to expectations and as uh, Sonia pointed out CCL getting a huge uh, thumbs up from the market. Uh, Nilesh Bharti, uh, would you say that this is uh, coming to terms with reality and moving ahead? Uh, would you read more than just four units being sold off into Bharti latch on to the stock? 
No, I, I really don't think it makes sense to invest at uh, this stage. Uh, valuations are expensive. A bit of the up move has also come in because there have been talks that, uh, you know, uh, the other local calling options uh, through WhatsApp or Viber, etc., are uh, it, consumers will have to pay for that. So to that extent, that's just a bit of an added kind of a news. But I think uh, at these kind of valuations and post this up move, uh, I don't think it makes sense to really invest into uh, Bharti at these kind of levels. What about the market as a whole, Nilesh? We forgot to ask you about your general view. I mean, it's been uh, uh, hovering around this 8600 level. So the going has been good so far. But uh, do you see any triggers for a further up move? It looks very unlikely at this stage for an up move. Um, it's, it looks very likely that the next couple of months, uh, post the up move the market has already had from those levels of 8000, um, it, it, it seems that uh, the room for an upside from these levels is going to be very, very limited. Uh, you could see a 100, 200 uh, point increase in the Nifty just because of uh, flows or one bit of good news. But otherwise, I'd probably think that uh, the market uh, would perhaps consolidate at these kind of levels uh, and maybe over the next couple of months also kind of, you know, be in this band of about 8,000 to 8,800. There's a huge band, uh, but it looks very likely that over the next two or three months it will remain in this band. Okay, but you think the bottom has definitely moved up? It looks like. I mean, um, I mean, I think on developments on China or on Greece mm -hmm. or on a on a rate hike by the U.S. Fed, the markets have gone to that level of 8,000 on a couple of occasions uh, in in the quarter of April to June. So it's already gone there twice. Uh, it looks like that for the time being. I don't think earnings is going to make a very simple, significant impact. So unless we don't have a, block, a black swan event or any other event which has really not been factored, it looks very unlikely that this market will break 8,000 and stay there for a long period of time. So I'd probably say that at this stage, 8,000 seems to be a reasonable base for the market. Okay. okay. Well, uh, uh, just wanted to ask you two other, I mean, not two, a bunch of other earnings are going to come today from the Nifty itself. Uh, there's our Asian Pains and HUL, <coughs> the two FMCG guys, and of course HDFC Bank. I wouldn't bother about HDFC Bank much. I don't think they swerve mm -hmm. in good times and bad times, but uh, FMCG? I think in FMCG, the story is going to be more about margin improvement, margin expansion, as raw material costs uh, come down, input costs come down. Okay. Uh, I think especially in the case of Asian paints, uh, clearly with crude where it is, uh, there's going to be a very strong case. Uh, I don't think the top line growth is going to be very significant. I don't think the volume growth is going to be even high single digits. It's probably going to be mid single digits. So to that extent, I think both HUL and Asian paints are going to be more of margin expansion stories rather than any significant improvement in the top line uh, or in, in, in the volumes. What will you watch out for in the earnings season? Is there anything you want to latch on to? I think uh, on declines, uh, you probably want to look at things like engineering, cement. Uh, these are some of the sectors which I think hold promise. Uh, every day, every second day, you would talk about a new project being unveiled, a new, uh, whether it's the, on the road side, on the railway side. I think these are some of the areas where you basically seeing the government coming out with new projects, commissioning new projects. So I think clearly there seems to be a lot of positive news in terms of actual numbers yet to play out over the next couple of years. So I think for some reason, if these companies have a, a disappointing uh, earning season, I think I would use that as an opportunity to really look at and do some bottom fishing in, in these kind of sectors. By the way, Sun Pharma has recovered from its lows, so it was down about 16 odd percent. Now the stock has made one dash at an, uh, an attempt at a recovery and is now down about 11 odd percent or so. The real estate space is getting hit very hard. Look at Unitech, it's now down 10 percent. Of course, that's become a penny stock now, but huge volumes getting traded on the downside. DLF, HDIL, all these stocks are down about one to three odd percent. So sentiment in the broader market is not is not that good. I mean, yes, good quality earnings. Are getting rewarded but uh, you know we are seeing quite a bit of a downside in uh, the broader market. There was that ambit report saying that uh, they expect a, a big correction in uh, real estate prices. expected for the last couple of no, years. No, no, I'm not there saying that that is true or I mean I, I'm not going to comment on that report yes. but there is a sentiment yes, negative definitely. is all I'm saying. Definitely. Uh, Nilesh, uh, you know you were telling us about the, the lack of upside potential for this market but if you had to stay away from a couple of sectors uh, which ones would they be? I still think banking is a, a sector to probably still uh, be very, very careful about. Uh, I think on the leading private banking side, I think valuations are expensive. Uh, and so to that extent, I think one, uh, you, you, I don't think you're going to make serious money by investing at these kind of levels. Mm -hmm. I think public sector banks, the pain is likely to yet continue. 
uh, we believe that the asset quality problems uh, will persist for at least another two to three quarters before you could actually say that maybe the worst is uh, behind them. Uh, so barring, of course, if, if there is basically a rate cut, uh, surprise rate cut by the RBI, and you could see some pop up there. But otherwise, I still think that uh, that's one area that one has to be very, very careful about. And I'm sure you love steel. <laughs> Sorry, that's being nasty. <laughs> okay, I mean, uh, let me just take the engineering goods uh, bit that you spoke about, uh, uh, the one odd capital goods. Would you, uh, I mean, there was this less noticed uh, performance by fa FAG bearings, FAG bearings did fairly well. Are you getting a sense that some of the mid cap uh, capital goods, at either for uh, replacement demand, for replacement of wear and tear, or because of the new orders you spoke about, deserve a look in? Oh, absolutely. Uh, because that's one area where new players have not come in. Uh, you know, the whole engineering, capital goods, capital equipment space, it's the same set of players. It's been now years since you've really seen any new player come in there. So the incumbents uh, will benefit disproportionately when the investment cycle picks up. Uh, and, and I think at that point of time, they'll be able to exert some kind of pricing pressure as well uh, or pricing power with their customers. So I clearly believe that at least from a three to four year kind of a horizon, uh, the incumbent players in the engineering, equipment and infrastructure space uh, could benefit disproportionately. Okay. We were talking about Sun Pharma earlier. You know, we didn't expect to see a 16% downtick on the stock this morning. But uh, given that these are one-time integration costs that the company has stated, the reason for which, you know, there's been a profit warning, uh, do you think that it's not a structural problem that the company is going through and it's just a one-time cost uh, because of which, you know, this hit should not be taken that seriously? Or do you think that there is some more downside to go? There could be some more downside because I clearly believe market is a slave of growth. Uh, so if you basically going to say that, you know, my growth is virtually gone for the entire year, okay. uh, then the market will say I have some more time and mm. I'll probably come back later uh, when growth stabilizes. So clearly Sun Pharma continues to be uh, an excellent company. Uh, structurally, it's in a sweet spot. The strategy which they have been implementing for years will continue to unfold and will continue to deliver growth for the company. Uh, but I think this what the issue that they're going through right now is more temporal in nature, uh, which could probably last for two or three quarters. So I clearly believe that, yes, if you have a multi-year horizon, maybe this is a good opportunity uh, to kind of, you know, uh, buy now and then keep use any further declines to keep accumulating the stock for the long term. What's the 12-month or 18-month target for the Nifty? I wouldn't be surprised if, say, in the 18 months, we are around the levels of 10,000 or so. Uh, you know, and that's why I clearly believe that yes, from a risk reward, the market is uh, pretty well poised that we are at that 85, 8600 level. Uh, on a very normalized basis, you know, the downside could be 500 points, the upside could be 1500 points uh, from here. Because over the next 18 months, we definitely believe that earnings growth will be uh, pretty strong. Uh, it looks very difficult right now, but we believe that over an 18-month horizon, you could actually see earnings growth come back in double digits. So that's one. Uh, two is India is not having those problems of growth like most other economies uh, world over. Growth has bottomed out. Three, of course, is that over the next 18 months, a lot of reforms will be unveiled. Of course, there would be some yes, kind of setbacks yeah. here and there. But net-net, I think over the next 18 months, some of these two or three big bang reforms could definitely unveil. Investment cycle is likely to pick up. And interest rates are going to kind of uh, still kind of go, go lower. So I think all in all, the triggers, the catalysts that you would see for a market up move over an 18-month horizon are there on the horizon. And so to that extent, I think we are far more constructive on the market from a 12 to 18-month horizon. All right, Nilesh, thank you for joining thank us you. and sitting with us all through the big headlines that came in. Uh, thanks for that. Thank well, that's you. the word coming in from Nilesh Shah of Envision. By the way, Infosys is picking up some more pace mm -hmm. now. It's up almost about 9% and big volumes getting traded after what has been a very good set of numbers from the company. So more on that in a bit. Uh, we will be hearing from Vishal Sikka as well. Uh, many more heavy-duty earnings expected later today, including the likes of HUL and Asian Paints. Sanjay Manyal of ICICI Direct will join in to tell us what to expect.